Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you this episode is brought to you by patrons like Ayo Comest, Blacklist OG, Carlos, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Denton, Nestor Flores, Rogue Robin, Shawnee P, Some Guy Named Bob, Sodosan 0424, Siderant 23, and Renegamer 75. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and I'll really help us out. Thank you for your support, everybody. Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Talk FGO Wanted, the show where we let you know if you want to roll new servants. And this is a five star and a limited one. Hey, we're doing it. We're doing the core concept. We're doing the thing that Wanted is for. Sick. Cool. Sweet. All right. So today, Wanted will be about Sigurd, the new limited five star saber who is a man and has a single target noble phantasm. Spoilers for the second half of the video. So obviously this will be a pretty interesting one, um, though I think it'll be interesting to see overall, both in terms of interest in the community and how, like, algorithmically and whatever the stuff does, right, with uh, Sigurd here, because he's kind of the middle block between uh, Napoleon, who is permanent and, while a good unit, don't let anybody in the comments lie to you and say I said he was bad, he's just not very different, he does most of the same things that other uh, AoE archers do. But uh, he's permanent, so, and he's an AoE archer, of which there are a lot, so he starts this off. Then we get Sigurd in the middle, who covers a lot of ground. But then we get Scotty, who is a waifu and also meta-defining at the back end with the anniversary banners. So I'm very curious to see overall how this does. Spoilers, there will be a wanted for Scotty, and I expect it will be very, very good. But will it blow my mind like wanted Okutan and wanted Abigail? Who knows? Anyway, if this is your first time watching Let's Look FGO Wanted. The basic way we break this down is we'll do it in four parts. We'll talk about a character's real life, history, and folklore. We'll talk about their lore with the capital L and the Fate Universe, you know, where they go different, if they're involved in any other works, some of their re relationship to FGO and stuff. We'll break down their mechanics. That's another big thing is, so so you've just rolled this unit, or so you want to roll this unit, what does he do? Or she, as a lot of the cases, you know, we cover all that stuff. Uh, in this part, we also usually talk about team comp, CE selection, stuff like that. Right? And then... Lastly, we talk about their rarity, not their star rarity, though that is technically a variable, at least for the rest of this year. We'll see if it continues. You guys need to watch more of those videos if you want me to keep doing that. Um, but we'll talk about how frequent their banners are, because that's also a real key sign for when people want to roll. If you know a servant's not going to show up for another two years, then you might decide to roll now rather than later versus another servant who's going to have lots of rate-ups in the future, right? Okay, so today we're talking about Sigurd, who is not Siegfried, maybe. Um, both in Fate and in real life, that's kind of a wiggly bit. Um, at the highest level, I can say that Sigurd slash Siegfried is a Germanic hero. He kills a dragon. He gets murdered later. He might be related to an actual Frankish king, Siegbert. Um, but we don't know. But there's a lot of... Norse and continental Germanic tradition here going on stuff. Um, the basic, you know, through different versions, the basic thing we should talk about is Sigurd is the Norse version. He's more common in the Eddas and the Volsung Saga. Uh, Fate especially draws inspiration from the Volsung Saga for Sigurd, whereas Siegfried is more from the continental German, high German literature and the Nibelungenleib, and, uh, which was later expanded into Wagner's operas and lots of other stuff, okay? So... Uh, they're two different sources. They're similar, but not quite the same. Um, so in particular, what we will talk about with the Scandinavian, the Norse traditions, uh, the thing to know about Sigurd specifically is that he is part of the Volsung family, who are a very famous but very ill-fated legendary family. Uh, they are descended from the god Odin, so they're super cool. Also, spoilers, that's why Sigurd has divinity. Um, and, uh, Odin actually shows up a lot in the Volsung Saga and the Edda, as you would expect, being a primarily Norse story. He just does the usual stuff, gives people magic swords, sick magic swords in, in stumps, breaks magic swords that can, so they can be reforged into cooler magic swords later, I don't know, whatever. He shows up, he does stuff. Um, it's a major recurring theme. Uh, and then there's also a lot of your typical high epic drama. There's revenge, there's murder, there's supernatural beings, there's killing a dragon, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, I think the other primary folkloric stuff, because we're not going to bring down the whole Volsung Saga, it's a really big deal, okay? You should read about it yourself if you're interested. 
the primary things that are different between the two is that Sigurd tends to have a lot more poems and a lot more stuff about his youth because it tracks his whole family tree, you know, through the whole point. His dad dies before he meets him, all that stuff. He goes out to revenge his father, etc. Um, you know, lots of other stuff like that. But so there's there's stories of his youth, and then there's the lead up to, uh, you know, what would you say? The other different things, basically. There's a lot of uh following suit for how he meets uh Brynhild, for instance, or Brynhildr, as it is in this version. And there's some different stuff he learns from the dragon, which is another big deal in. The Nibelungen lied, Siegfried stabs the dragon and is bathed in its blood and becomes invincible except for one spot on his back. Sigurd, after killing the dragon, um, cooks its heart, um, but he happens to uh, lick some of the blood, and that gives him the ability to speak to birds, cool ability, um, who let him know that the guy he killed that dragon for and got that gold back for is going to betray him, and then he eats the heart, he obtains great wisdom, and goes on to not betray and the other, I think, really big thing is that um, there's a lot more relationship. Uh, I've actually talked about this in the Brynhildr Wanted, which you can go watch. That already exists. There's a lot of actual back and forth. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that actually exists. Let me make sure that actually exists so I don't have to edit myself out. And if it does exist, I'll leave it in. But I'm like 90% sure it exists because I have images for it. Nope, there she is. Wanted Brynhild. Valkyrie Queen. Yeah, nope. Okay, cool. Just double checking. I can leave all that in now. Now it's funny. Um... But there's a there's a lot more back and forth between them that makes it seem like they have an actual relationship rather than in the Sig in the in the Siegfried story it's just kind of hey that guy asked you to do a thing and some shenanigans happen. The relationship with his wife Krimhild is a lot more important than that because arguably the whole back half of that legend is about Krimhild's quest for revenge. Does different stuff, um, different themes, but also some of the same themes. There's a lot of revenge in both stories. Um, I mentioned his sword Graham. We'll talk about that a little bit later in terms of how he uses it as a noble phantasm, but um, that is also a thing that's uh, different. It's Balmung in the other one, and uh, in the Volsung Saga specifically, there's a lot of association with Odin and reforging the sword that was broken, all that stuff. Still kills dragons, though. Is there anything else about Sigurd's folklore we should break down? Uh, probably not the high level. You've got most of it. There's a lot of stories about his whole family leading up to him. He does different stuff with killing the dragon, has different relationships, and if you want to know the details, you should really check out this story on your own, right? So in Fate, like I said, um, it has been debated, are Siegfried and Sigurd the same person? Obviously in FGO they're not, they're different units, but that, that's kind of what we're going for, is they're similar, but because they're from different sources, they have different abilities and different qualities. Uh, and like I said, in FGO, Sigurd is definitely taken mostly from the Volsung Saga. He has a different relationship with Brynhild in story also, um, different noble phantasms, different abilities, you know, literally he has the ability of crystallized wisdom, whereas... Um, Siegfried has the armor of Fafnir, for instance. Though I should also point out, it's actually really interesting. Um, the character Atli, a.k.a. Attila the Hun, appears in both, but does different things. Atli is Brynhild's uh, brother in the Volsung Saga, hence why Brynhild thinks of Altera as her sister, and Natsu had to come up with a really, really convoluted one for that. Thanks, Germanics, and your weird boner for involving Attila the Hun in your mythology. Um, so that's a fun thing in Fate. Uh, that I already probably covered somewhere else, but it comes back to the whole using the Volsung Saga. Uh, the other thing is, that I think, that's main about lore is that, um, while it hasn't appeared on screen really until now, um, there, like, it could have, but it might not have. I don't know, I'd have to double-check the translations and stuff. But since Fate Stay Night, Graham has been alluded to as A, a demonic sword, B, a sword of selection, and C, a dragon-slaying sword. Um, and... Gil has some kind of prototype Graham in his uh, Gate of Babylon, but we're not sure if it's supposed to be the real Graham, because when Graham actually appears in FGO, it does weird stuff. It's like a, it's a sword that has the ability to, like, it, first of all, it looks very crystalline, um, and it has the ability to kind of break itself up into multiple parts and do different things, as per his different sprites and stuff. Uh so kind of like divide into different pieces because it was a sword that was broken and reforged. Like I said, interesting stuff. Um, so we've known that Graham is definitely a noble phantasm and it has certain qualities for a long time, but this is the first time that 100% for reals Graham has appeared and in the hands of Sigurd in FGO. Very interesting. Uh, the other thing major to look forward to with lore is that Sigurd is Ophelia Farmerslums. I don't know if I can say her name right. The Ophelia part's easy, the other part. 
but that's her servant as a cryptor, so he will be a major character who appears a lot in Lost Belt 2, uh, just like Anastasia did in Lost Belt 1. So expect to see a lot of him, and I won't do any spoilers, but that'll probably be the thing that makes you like him or not, because he'll be heavily featured. Who could have guessed? Um, and uh, actually, like honestly, there are a lot of people who, after this Lost Belt and just in general Sigurd's introduction, uh, abandoned Wife Wing Bryn so that they could pair Sigurd with Bryn because they're adorable together. Uh, he's a cool guy, and he's uh, he's played by Seto Kaiba. That's right. Make your uh, your uh, blue eyes white jokes now. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I think that's it for lore and stuff. Why don't we go ahead and move into mechanics? All right. So mechanically, Sigurd, a single target mail saver, like we said, and uh, as befitting, he's got a very high attack. Uh, he has the highest attack in class, tied with Arthur. Though obviously having a single target Noble Phantasm, his damage potential in a singular fashion will be larger, but that's okay. Arthur is for sweeping mobs, Sigurd is for bullying bosses. And you'll uh, see all you need to know about Arthur uh, with Lost Belt 2, actually, if you've got him. Uh, also has the exact same HP as Arthur, which is midling. So uh, already we're coming from a pretty strong start. He has very high offensive potential. And he has the right NP setup to uh, to utilize it best. Uh, you know, average star generation and weight, that's pretty typical for Sabres. He's got the typical Sabre deck, quick arts, arts, buster, buster. And so, uh, because he actually has hit counts on those cards, his NP gain is decent. You know, three hits with 0.62% is not the worst. Uh, it's not the best assist, but it's not the worst assist. So he'll do okay on that regard, though, since he doesn't really have any battery abilities, you're probably mostly relying on arts crits or passive NP gain from somewhere. Where could it be? Hmm. Hmm. We'll talk about that later in Team Com. Uh, but yeah, that's his core stats right there. Pretty good. Uh, very decent ha hit counts on that extra attack, and his one quick card pops pretty good, uh, especially with some other stuff you'll see in a second. But the big one, obviously, is the NP. He has a single target buster NP. It's very simple. Uh, it's got a bucket of hit counts. Seven hits. So that's going to do some fairly decent star effects. And it does a trait damage versus dragon enemies. Now, I do want to do a slight mea culpa. Um, I mentioned Divine Savers in the Napoleon one that just came out. And I did forget a few. There are a couple more than I thought. Um, not many. But mostly I just forgot that those guys even existed. Um, but let's actually talk about how many dragon trait enemies there are. So, uh, besides, obviously, anything that is an enemy, right? Of which there are a lot. Um, and there are actually some of the mobs, which are dragon type, um, which can be, you know, they look draconic, they can be dragon type. But the actual uh, dragon trait for servants, uh, not that common, is not that common among lancers. Um, you're looking at, obvious, uh, now, obviously... They do show up. Uh, Liz is a fairly popular unit, so she gets a lot of occasional pops in as a boss or something in farming. Um, all Both Lancer Artorias are dragon, obviously. And interestingly enough, probably because of Leviathan, Summer Melt is a dragon Lancer. Um, other than that, it's you're looking for Berserker, so all Kios, both Lancer and Berserker, are dragon. MHXA and the new Kyo Koyo. So it is actually a fairly narrow slice. Um... While it will be very effective against certain bosses, like, obviously, if you, like with a lot of trade damage, I should say, if you run into a Liz boss or a Lancer Artoria boss, um, even me, an esteemed man of culture of Mordred's, will understand that, no, Sigurd's gonna punch harder on that NP uh, than Mordred would. So, if you run into those Lancers, he is 100% probably the optimal choice. But they aren't as expansive as even, I think, um, Sabres who are Divine are. But it will be somewhat effective on stuff. And also, the other thing is, uh, we've talked about this earlier when we did Wanted stuff. Uh, not Wanted. Uh, we did Welfare stuff. Sorry. Both start with W. With um, Sieg, interestingly enough, who uh, has part of the family, uh, also has Dragon Slaying abilities. What it really means is that you're going to do not quite advantage, because um, it's a 1.5 multiplier, but uh, you will do extra damage to enemies you would normally do neutral, probably, to. So, if you 
are running into a mixed node, his NP can hit sabers who are dragon, of which there are bunches, as, you know, as decently hard as if he had class advantage. Especially with some of his stimulus. But mostly, uh, he bullies very specific Lancer bosses really, really hard. So let's talk about his skills. Um, his skills are very generalized, but very effective at what they do. So first up, his starting skill is Primeval Rune Knight. Uh, Bryn taught him the runes. That is canon to Volsung. Uh, minimum five turn cooldown. So this increases your critical strength for three hits for three turns. Uh, which I think they did so that they can give it the strength of a buff that would normally show up on a one turn buff. 50 to 100%, so up to double crit strength over possibly three turns, uh, but if you do a Brave Chain, he'll pop all three if they crit. Um, this is pretty good, honestly. Like, really, I, I hope that more critical effects would be three hits, three turns, because obviously you can't milk them constantly for three turns. That would probably be too good, especially at a plus 100% at level 10, but they are decent because you can spread them out, because it is... It's still hard, unless you're, like, running a jack or something in there, or you have somebody whose NP uh, generates loads and loads of stars, right? You know? Uh, there's not going to be a guarantee that everybody's going to get, like, 100% crit rate. So, spacing it out so that Sigurd, when Sigurd pops his crits for three turns, he gets a very, very big boost is very, very goo. Okay? It's very cool. Um, also, heads up, actually... um. Sigurd is a fairly decently easy unit to ascend and even skill. Um, he does take a lot of giant rings, which are a new mat, but that's only at his ninth level. Um, and it's only 24 each, so it's not even 100 of them, um, as can happen. And the, all the other stuff he takes is, like, uh, scales and dragon fangs, um, and his ascensions need uh, some lamps in there. So he's not the craziest to ascend. Um, you probably would need to work on all those rings, but it could be worse, you know. Okay, so his second skill is Dragon Species Modification EX. Uh, this has this is a basically a mana burst with a guts. Um, this means it does have a fairly long cooldown, which is a little bit problematic, but you do get your usual one turn, 30% to 50% buster up, and it gives himself three turns of guts. 1k HP isn't the best, but hey, it's a guts. He'll stay alive, um, and it does give him a very, very big steroid to go with that. So if you do, uh, you know... An NP crit, you know, buster crit turn. Mmm, spicy. Spicily used. Uh, and then his final skill is actually pretty interesting because it's targetable. Um, and it also has a five turn minimum cooldown. So this increases the target ally's critical star drop weight rate. Drop weight? No. That would be confusing. Uh, star gen, basically, for one turn, 50 to 100%. So at uh, max level for one turn, you can double any ally's critical star gen. And it gives the ally one turn of diva immunity. Fairly robust. Um, so you can turn around and uh, use those crit stars, probably, for that guy. Um, now, obviously, probably you're going to pop this on Sigurd himself a fairly decent amount of the time so he can get that debuff immunity and so that he can grossly overcharge his star gen before he does, like, you know, an NPBB turn or something. Or even QBB. Ooh, that would be spicy. Spicy turn. So that he generates a lot of stars, which he can then pop Primeval Rune to do big crits on. Possibly Buster Crits. Um, but... If you see another unit who is your star generator or something, you can totally pass this off to them and also give them debuff immunity with a fairly low cooldown. Um, plus 100% star drop skills are great for a lot of uses. And it means that Sigurd has play as something other than just a boss bullier, even if you will probably use it on him a lot of the time. Let's cover his passes really quick before we talk about, like, CEs, team comps, and stuff. Um, so he's got magic resistance A, as you might expect from such a high-level saber. So he's pretty resistant to debuffs on his own. He has a Riding A, um, so his one quick card is very potent, uh, very extra. And then he has Divinity B for just that little bit extra damage. Uh, none too flashy, nothing really special, but all the stuff your standard issue saber needs to do good work. Spicy work. So, composition. Uh, I mean, so here's the weird thing, right? I'll say this, it's weird. Um... Sigurd is, it may just be when they designed units, but Sigurd is very much in line with the Buster Crit meta. His best support is uh, is probably Merlin. Um, Merlin can help him with NP gen, Merlin can help him with HP recovery, because Sigurd doesn't have any hard defenses, he just has a guts, and a fairly low HP guts at that. Considering that his, um, you know, his max HP count is is fairly robust, it's, it's in the middle of sabers, you know, um... 100's not a lot. 
even for three turns. So that really helps him out. Merlin's also got Illusion for hard defenses, and then Hero Creation will go perfectly into Sigurd's already existing buffs. More more max HP, um, put him up there with, you know, some of the really thick sabers. Uh, more crit, more buster, right? And he's a single-target boss hitter, so that's what he's good at. Um, that will be probably the, the, the key support unit for him. Um, which is why I say it's weird, because immediately after this, uh, Scotty's gonna come out. Scott Scotty. Or technically, Scott, Scotty, or whatever. But we're gonna call her Scotty, because nobody's gonna remember what that weird symbol is. Um, also, they pronounce Scott's name like Scasa or something. Anyway, Sigurd. Um, Scotty. Technically, vis a vis Sigurd. Uh, Scotty's coming out right after, which is gonna be the quick looping metagame. So, um, I feel like a lot of people have probably forgotten Sigurd and the fact that there's a shiny new metagame going on, but if you're already doing Buster Crit stuff, Sigurd fits in there perfectly, um, and you can pop him with other Buster support units. You know, I've used, uh, I've used Leonidas as soft Buster support before uh, Merlin was even in the game, you know, um, anybody who can support that kind of stuff, uh, there aren't really a whole heck of a lot of support sabers. But a lot of sabers do have um, charisma type effects for AOE stuff. Who could probably go well with him? But uh, he makes a decent pair with those guys. Um, actually, let me double check. Caesar's uh, insight is targetable, right? Yeah, uh, and it's got a buff that uh, increases their drop rate too. So um, Caesar would fit in perfectly as the support unit and slash second hitter uh, with Sigurd, even though they're even though he's quick based. Because here's the thing. Sigurd is a saber type, so he's got arts and buster cards primarily, though his quick card is very good. But he wants to crit, so you're going to need star generators. And obviously, while his third skill helps with that, you know, you still need to generate some stars, which obviously is another thing that Merlin does. Uh, Waver, though, will also be perfectly serviceable, um, giving him that big boy charge up to 50%. If you're using Waver, I say you could stick, say, I would honestly probably go all the way with Golden, Golden Sumo. I know his NP is important, but he's a big he's a big attacker. He's got a very strong attack strength. You want him to just you want him to clobber. Um, you want him to hit. Um, so that's a good CE choice. By the way, about supports though, I will say also interestingly enough, um, Bryn is actually a good support for uh, Sigurd. Shocking nobody. Um, with the future buffed version, I believe it's future. I don't think her strengthening has come out yet. Um, but even her base version of Hero's Assistant, aka Hero's Bridesmaid, is up to a 3k heal, which, like we said, Sigurd could use, and it gives you a pretty big targetable star absorption, and then after the buff, um, the star absorption gets huger, and she also increases their crit strength by a decent amount, uh, which is a thing Sigurd will want, because, as we've said, sabers are very middle of the road as far as star weight goes, so if you have, like, an archer or a uh, writer or something else in there, um, you might need to worry about whether your stars are going to get slurped up by somebody else. Give him the big weight buff, make him do bigger crits, heal him. It fits perfectly. So for the rest of the CEs, um, I would say only if you're doing waiver to a starting battery CE, um, just because that's another thing he doesn't do at all. Sigurd has no battery. You're probably relying on other external chargers or arts crits to get him up. Um, I guess you could probably give him Prisma Cosmos to make him more consistent, but that's probably not consistent enough. Um, other than that, what you're looking for is Buster, Crit, NP. Shocking nobody, again. You know, just uh, give him anything that gives him more damage on that NP and gives him more crit strength. Um, you could stick him with 2030, but 2030 is probably better on like your like your Waver or your Merlin, or even your Hans. Hans can, can flow in there. Um, so usually we don't talk about Bond CEs, um, and honestly... Sigurds isn't the best assist, but it does kind of reinforce what I'm talking about. It gives all allies buster and crit strength up while he's on the field. So that's basically what you want out of him anyway. You want him to crit harder and bust harder. So take your pick, whatever you like. Just get in there. Go for it. Okay, so let's see. That's CEs, that's team comps. Let's talk about rarity. Hey, Sigurds really, really rare. Um, he's literally only had two rate-ups in the entirety of JP so far. That means that other than these two rate-ups, one of which is the one that's about to happen, there's nothing out of him for two years. And, um, the next was Happy New Year, which in Japan was 2019, but that'll be this new year, uh, at, uh, yeah, it'll be this new year at 2020? Hold on, I was confused because I'm scrolling, I'm like, oh, is it because Benny N was technically her own event? I was just double-checking a page and it was like, where's the new banner? 
I believe that is correct. So yeah. Um, which hey, that's interesting enough. That's that's right around the corner when another uh new saber comes out, who is uh single target with trait damage. So uh you you may not be rolling for him the second time around, and after that, it's just you know GSSRs and stuff. So yeah, um, if you want Sigurd, if you really want him, this is gonna be kind of your uh your your big chance because like i said um when he pops up again on banner it'll be in the new year's mix and it'll be right along with Benanma, who is very popular and also is arts focused now obviously if you're not very arts focused that's not as much of a competition but still it's a thing um and he hasn't come back hopefully during the anniversary this year they rerun so they do some like big lost belt banner reruns so you can see some people like like napoleon hasn't gotten a raid up in a while sigurd can get a raid up um, we can clap back some of the other Lost Belt, uh, one and threes too, as well, because it's been a couple of years since those came out, obviously, as they're starting to come out in English. So, yeah, if you're real keen on the Sigurd boy, uh, you're gonna want to roll now. Also, another note I want to say really quick, uh, I said this in the Let's Talk in the pregame, but I'll remind everybody and Wanted, because it's probably just after the banner. If you're rolling for both Sigurd and Brynhild, unless they've changed it by the time the banner actually comes out, their double rate up isn't until the end of the sequence, so you're going to want to wait or you're going to have to split your rolls. Um, it'll be just Sigurd on the front end. Okay, I think that's everything. This video's already gone on long enough. But, uh, hey, man, I love swords. All right. So's. So, so, so's. It's time to wrap up. Hope you like this uh, wanted. Stay tuned for uh, Wanted Scotty soon when they uh, announce that one. All right, cool beans. So's. I'll just get, you, get out of your hair. And then uh, wish you luck on your rolling. So, hey, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you have any comments, you can leave them in the comment section down below. You can also hit us up on our Discord. That link is in the description and on our channel page. If you're new here and haven't already, please subscribe to our channel so you can always get our latest wanted. I've already told you there will be a wanted for a really, really popular unit that people like to talk about soon. And more stuff in the future. Okay? Also, if you're already subscribed even, and you haven't already, hit that bell for notifications so you always know we post a video. We've only got like 20% of people who do it, um, which is below the average. The top average on YouTube is 30%. But also, it lets you know when we post a new video, like if Omega has to post this, say, at midnight after a stream ends or something during maintenance, you know? You want to be right there when it happens, right? Am I right? Hey. Okay. And uh, the only other thing I want to say is to remind you that this episode, uh, well, this episode is brought to you by our patrons, but um, you can support us by becoming a patron, and you could have gotten access to this episode early, and lots of other goodies, and it really supports us, helps us out. Keeps the, the train flowing, the gears greased. Okay, so all right, that's it for everything. Once again, good luck to everybody rolling. And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and go back and check out uh, Wanted Brynhildr. It does, in fact, exist. I checked earlier. Uh, so check that one out. And uh, also, I don't know, for shits and giggles, uh, go watch One of Napoleon, too. Please. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. I really should have worked in some more Blue Eyes White Dragon memes.